Hello everyone, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming Film and Animation and what we're looking at in this video is how we can get a skeletal mesh with an animation into the Unreal Engine. So we're going to be looking at the animated chest for this example uh, and looking at environmental assets that have an animation and how we can trigger those animations in Unreal using the Blueprint system. So first things first, I'm going to go into my folder that I created in the series before um, and I'm going to create another folder in here called environmental assets and then I'm going to create one here called chest. So in here we're going to look at how we bring an object in. So a little bit different from the way that we bring in the uh, static mesh and everything. We're going to start off with the static skeletal though and work from there. So first of all it can detect that it already has a skeleton in there but we've got to make sure that that is checked. We want to import the mesh and we also want to continue to keep the same scale which in this case is adding 20 to that. Uh, we don't want to import the animations on this particular one. We will do that for the others in just a second. So we go import. It may give us a few errors and everything but none of these are breaking um, any of the things so that is fine. So now if we look in here, it's just taking a moment just to compile these shaders. And again, we want to make sure it's brought through all of the different ones. And as we can see, it's also left out the roughness uh, mesh. So a roughness ones there. So we're just going to go in here and uh, pull that in as well. And then go to our material and just make sure the roughness is set up there. So plug that into roughness there and save. And as we can now see, our asset is there and we can just talk about all the other things we have in here. So these are the texture maps and the material that is there. We also have now this skeletal mesh. This skeletal mesh is the one that has all the bones in there. Um, we also have in here a physics asset. This is what's going to be controlling the collisions um, so that when things react to those sorts of things there. Uh, and then there's another skeletal uh, mesh asset there as well. So this is the skeleton and this is the skeletal mesh. So um, first things first, let's have a look at the physics asset because Unreal will do its best. And again, you've got to remember when they do this skeletal thing, it's more to do with characters and ragdolls. So this particular one it's basically uh, given a body to each bone uh, and then try to create a constraint to it so that when we simulate physics uh, it has a tendency to sort of like fall apart and ragdoll. Now as it is we don't really want to do this um, for this one necessarily. It uh, takes a little bit of time and practice to get those ones right there. So I'm in fact going to actually delete all of these and just replace it with one that we can see that um, will basically just allow us to give a basically a cube or rectangular prison so that it can roll around the level um, and block the player from being able to walk over the top of it or walk through it but doesn't do anything outside of that. So to do that I'm going to first go here and go to show all bones. Uh, I'm going to go to the body which is right here and then I'm going to right click on there, add shape and I'm just going to go add box. As you can see it's quite large so I just need to resize this down so that it is not um, colliding outside of the world um, but will still work to be able to block the player. So there we go and down. We might want to change this and adjust this slightly as we need to um, but that is generally the idea that we want there. So with that in place now um, we should be able to bring that asset into the level like so and as we can see, it's right there and it's already got physics attached to it. We might need to change the mass of that because that is uh, reacting just a little bit too uh, light, um, though it can always be a glitch there as well. So anyway, uh, we have got that in place now. Um, so that's how you can import a skeletal mesh, but we can't just leave it like that. Um, we have to bring in our animations and then set up those animations with a blueprint. So we're just going to sort this folder out a bit. I'm just going to call this materials and get all of those into there. And I'm going to create another folder in here called Anims. And inside of that, I'm then going to bring in 
my other animations. Now this is the tricky part um, that tends to trip a few people up. Um, in order to actually pull these animations in, close animation, open animation here, I need to drag and drop it in as if I were importing it again. But this time, instead of importing the skeletal mesh, which we already have, I'm going to uncheck that. Sorry, keep the skeletal mesh, uncheck import mesh, because we already have the mesh imported. But now I'm going to actually select chest static skeleton, like so. I'm going to then put in the same um, uniform scale there, go import. And now when I go in here, I should see this um, here ready to go. So I'm just going to check it to make sure nothing weird is happening. And yep, we're all good. Excellent. So now we're going to do the same, but for the close animation. This is good because it now means I can go back into Maya and add any other extra animations that I may want to add in. Um, and I don't have to keep re-importing the skeleton every single time I do that. I can just keep it on the same skeleton. Um, especially becomes important when you're working with multiple characters and you want them all to have the same skeleton. You can quickly then translate those um, animations to any different types of characters instead of having to come up with a new rig every single time um, you're creating that for the characters. So we'll just test that as well just to make sure that is all good. And it is, it's all coming out rather nicely there. So now we're just going to create a simple blueprint that has the chest open and close when you come near it. So we're going to go here to blueprint class. We're going to go with actor still. We're not necessarily going to look at character pawn. That's going to be the next one when we start looking at the dwarf. I'm going to go here to actor. We're going to go VP underscore uh, chest and open this up. So similar to what we did before, we add a static mesh. We're just going to do the same thing, but this time for a skeletal mesh. And with that skeletal mesh in there, we can just go over here. Instead of a blue, it's a purple one. I'm going to go over here now and go chest static, and there it is, ready to go. Um, but we now need to go down and check what our uh, collision is. At the moment, it says no collision. We're going to change that just to be block all. Uh, and I'm going to also make it that the character can't step over the object. Um, so can character step on? We're going to say no. Um, that's just going to stop the character from glitching out when it opens and things like that. So that is there and ready to go. We now need, just as we did with the sword, a box collision, something that's going to actually be there to detect when the player is close. I'm going to move that up and just in front of the character, in front of the uh, chest, um, just so that uh, it we can't open it from the back or the side or anything silly like that. So now that's all in place, I'm going to select the box, go here to event graph, I'm going to get rid of these, and then select my box, go down to the very bottom of my details to get to my events, and just as we did with our um, static mesh, we're going to bring the same one into here. I cast to character, and then same thing, enable input. Um, so. We'll pull that to the side. I just want to show you first how you can get an animation to play, and then we'll talk about how we can get that to play when we press a button. So we're going to go into here and go play animation, and we'll see there skeletal mesh. It's this one here. And now we can see all of the animations that are available in Unreal. Uh, we want the chest open anim sequence. And then when we walk away from it, we want it to close. So this character here is all characters. So later when we bring in the dwarf, we won't have to reprogram it, which will be good. Um, we're going to use the same skeletal mesh. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then I'm going to go here and go close animation. Compile and uh, let's give it a test. So we'll go down here, content browser, VB chest, bring that into the level, press play. Yep, and I walk up, it opens, I walk away, it closes opens, closes. Excellent. That's really good. And as you can see, I can't walk into it. You will notice a bit of a glitch there when I walk away and it hasn't quite finished yet. So you've got to be careful of that sometimes to make sure that you don't um, have that. And there's a few things you can put in there to fix that. But let's just finish this off um, by having this so that this doesn't actually happen uh, unless you press a button. So first things first, we've got to set up our enable input and our disable input to make sure that, that doesn't have any, um, it doesn't allow us to open up the chest when we're not next to it. So I'm going to go here to play a character uh, controller and make sure that it is plugged into both of them so it knows it's getting the first player that spawned, in this case player index zero, and that's going to be there, and then we're just going to have a key. 
Uh, in this case, I'm going to go with the E key again because that just universally seems to be the interact key. So down here, E, and we're going to introduce a flip-flop. What a flip-flop does is it allows us to press it once and send one signal and then press it again and send out another signal. So it acts like a bit of a switch there. So with those two in place there, I can now go compile, bring this down, press play, and now when I walk up to the chest and press E, it opens up, and I press E again, and it closes. I can walk away from it, um, I can leave it open if I so choose to, um, so that's that. So again, just a quick way of going through how to bring in a skeletal animation, how to set up the physics for it, and then set up a small script that plays the animations once you have them in there as well. That's all I wanted to look at really in this. Uh, later on, once we have all of our ingredients together, that is the sword, the chest, and the character, then we'll start looking at more advanced things like, well, how do we have a, a weapon class and a storage container class and a character class so that we can have uh, multiple characters and have some sort of a game set up here. But for now, we just wanna look at how we import these assets into Unreal Engine 4 and 5 and then go from there.